Hello and welcome to the awesome TV show with Nikhil Taneja. Was it just me or was July the most boring month of 2018? There was so little that was interesting to watch that I spent most of the month repeatedly binge watching Rahul Gandhi's Hug to Narendra Modi. Okay, that was probably just me. I know all of you probably have better taste than that. So instead of doing a best of July 2018, I'm going to recap best streaming TV series of 2018 so far on Netflix, Amazon and Hotstar. There are so many great things I have for you to watch ki kabhi kabhi lagta hai apne jo bhagwan hai. On Netflix, Glow season 2 and Luke Cage season 2. I love Glow because it's the most spirited ensemble of badass women anywhere on TV at the moment and Alison Brie is a treasure. And what I love about Luke Cage season 2 is that it's not just a great Marvel series but a great crime drama on its own with the hero just happens to be super. At number 4, End of the Fucking World season 1. End of the Fucking World came out of nowhere and is one of the best shows I've seen about what it means to be young. It's dark, it's weird, it's hilarious, but it's also so real with a big beating heart that turns it into one of the most unconventional rom-coms you'd ever see. At number 3, Dear White People season 2. Dear White People is not only the smartest and sharpest written show on TV, it's also the kind of show we need in the post-Trump world we live in today. It discusses race, gender, color, privilege and identity in a way that will make you smarter too and possibly more human. At number 2, Wild Wild Country. I could never have imagined in my wild wild dreams that one of our homegrown gurus could spawn one of the most interesting international docu series I ever see. But outside of all the chaos and controversy shown in it, Wild Wild Country is special for giving us a bigger badass this year than Kai Tone Day. Ma Anand Sheila. At number 1, Love Sick season 4. How are more people not talking about the sweetest and funniest show this year? Love Sick is one of the best things ever made about love and my favorite rom-com in years. I don't think any other show has done love and longing in the age of the millennial better than Love Sick and I doubt anyone ever will. Thank you for it, Tom Edge. PS, while it's not a TV series, the best thing on Netflix this year is without a doubt Nanette by Hannah Gadsby. That's not merely stand-up but catharsis. On Amazon Prime, at number five, Mr. Robot season three and about a boy. To be honest, there's not been much great original stuff from 2018 to watch on Amazon Prime, but they're streaming the third season of the mind-bending Mr. Robot, as well as a joyous sitcom that I have so immensely loved, About a Boy. So I guess that makes it completely okay. At number four, The Terror season one. The Terror is inspired by true events and what nightmarish and fascinating events they were. Produced by Ridley Scott. The series is a period drama set in the oceans. It does take time to take off, but when it does, it's a thrilling and chilling journey you'd love to be on. At number 3, Sneaky Pete season 2. I know everyone finds Money Heist a great fun high show, but all of you are probably not watching Sneaky Pete then. Co-created by Brian Cranston, yes, Walter White. The series about good-hearted con men and messy cons is best watched with popcorn. At number 2, Mozart in the Jungle season 4. It's terribly sad that one of the most charming shows of the last few years has been cancelled. But I'm so glad it went on such a terrific high. Season 4 is one of the dramedy's best yet and explores the Lala Landesk conundrum of love versus art. We'll really miss you Gail Gania Basal and Lola Kirkhi. At number 1, The Looming Tower. Easily one of the best shows of this year, The Looming Tower is one of its kind American shows that's not jingoistic and hypernationalist. In fact, the show about the events leading up to 9/11 puts the onus of as much of it on America as it does on Bin Laden. Plus, it's got a honorable Muslim character as its lead. What? On Hotstar, at number five, This Is Us season two and Crashing season two. This Is Us had an uneven second half of season two, especially with the Kate and Toby storyline. But it gave us the episode of Jack's last moments, and it was brutal and beautiful both. On the other hand, Jed Apatow produced comedy Crashing had a great season two, going into some deep storylines about struggle. At number 4, High Maintenance season 2, an anthology of different stories set in and around the world of Brooklyn millennials who use weed to get by. I love High Maintenance because it's a one of its kind lovely show that shines a light on our diversity while celebrating our common ground. At number 3, Homeland season 7. So Homeland's good again. In fact, in many episodes it's absolutely lip smackingly awesome. Since last season the show has started looking inwards, the problems that a divided America has created for itself. And from fake news to Russian collusion, this season has it all. At number 2, Westworld season 2. Westworld lost some of its charm and weight during season 2, but the fact remains that it is one of the most ambitious shows attempted on television. And just the acting by the ensemble is worth it. I also just can't get episode 8 out of my mind. The show is best in its saddest moments. At number 1, Trust season 1. Executive produced by Danny Boyle, created by Slumdog Millionaire writer Simon Bufoy and starring Donald Sutherland, Hilary Swank and Brendan Fraser. This is all the reason you need to watch the show in any case. Honestly, 
actress is one of the most fascinating dysfunctional family dramas you'd see with some incredible writing. And here's a bonus on YouTube Red, Cobra Kai. It's crazy how my favorite show of the year so far isn't on one of the big streaming sites, but on YouTube Red, Cobra Kai is a sequel to the cult karate kid and focuses on the story of the antagonist from the first film, Johnny Lawrence, 30 years later. All I can promise you is that it is the most fun you will have had this year by far. That's a lot of shows, so happy watching guys. To find out whether Sharp Objects and Who is America are any good, and also what to look out for in August, wait for the next episode. And yes, I'm also going to talk about Secret Games finally. If my best shows of the year so far are also your best shows of the year so far, please like, share and subscribe to the Film Companion channel. And if you think my favorite TV shows in general are also your favorite TV shows in general, then tell me on all social media at Taneja Mehu. Because Taneja Mehu is either way. Also, don't forget to comment on what your favorite shows of the year are in the comment section below.